once asked me, can you do that with like daubers and stuff? And I thought that you probably would like wipe the ink off. Um, but what I found was you actually can um, kind of dab it on. So I'm going to show you how to do that tonight. Um, I've already done um, three of the panels. I've done these three panels. So I'm going to show you how to do the, um, this is watermelon and tangel, was it? Oh, I'm doing delightful Dijon. Sorry, I'm doing the red and the yellow right now. So I'm going to set that one here so you can kind of have that as a reference. And um, let me get this out of the way. This will be our card that it's going to go on. Um, so I'm using this stencil, and I've used it a couple times with the happy. But I have to say, like, after a couple times of using <laughs> the happy and the polka dots, um, I wanted something a little bit different. So I decided to kind of try to just use the dots on the stencil. So. I'm going to start with uh, the watermelon. So this is the new watermelon uh, wonder ink. And I'm just going to ink uh, ink up the stencil with the dauber. So how you want to do that is just by patting and tapping it onto your stencil. You'll get a little bit off um, underneath, which is totally fine. but. Um, you'll be able to look and see, like you can already see where I've got it um, kind of dark and you just want to go for kind of a nice even coating. I'm only going to do about this uh, much of the area of the card. So go ahead and just kind of keep dabbing it on like this. We're going to do a lot of dabbing with daubers tonight. <laughs> I don't know why I was kind of in a dabbing mood. Um, so go ahead and just sort of ink up that whole rectangle shape and then I'm just going to show you you're going to lay on let me get a little bit further on the bottom I feel like I'm going to cut off that bottom section there. Um, you're just going to lay that right like that and then I still do have my brayer I'm going to just lay a piece of scrap paper on and then like brayer it flat. So carefully take it off and there you go. So it's kind of a fun look. Let me show you how I do the other one and then I'm going to trim these down. I'm just going to use the same stencil without even washing it yet and do this other side. So I felt like these were the two sections that had the largest amount of, these were like the two sections of the stencil that had the largest amount of dots. Okay. So go ahead and keep inking this up. Sorry, I have to, had to stop and get my computer to unfreeze so I make sure I'm still on live with you. So go ahead and ink that up and then same thing. I'm going to make sure we got up down far enough on the bottom. Just lay that down and roll over it with a piece of scrap paper. There we go. I just like to flip it off um, kind of carefully so you don't smear any of that ink since it is really wet ink. And there you go. Um, just clean off your stencil um, under like running water or with clean water. Um, and then I'm going to just bring up my Big Shot and show you how to cut that hello and a couple tips for doing that. I am using my magnetic platform and um, sometimes people say that that is a little difficult with these little framelits, um, but I think it works okay. I will tell you, you will want to kind of run it through um, in this direction 
just because that that way it kind of cuts slowly. Um, if you're having trouble with your um, magnetic platform kind of like jumping or if your plate's really curved, you can run it through this way. It just all goes through right at once. So <laughs> it can be kind of loud, but it's not going to hurt anything. So this is the thanks. Um, I did the hello on the other one. This little trio says thanks, hello, and cheers. So I haven't done the cheers yet. I don't really make a lot of cheers cards, but I will probably use it for scrapbooking, so that's kind of fun. Um, I just use, like, I'm using an X-Acto blade to just pop that out. comes out really easily. And the one thing I will tell you, I mean, it's not a big deal by any means, but these little word dies um, do tend to get little raised dots onto your words. This one really wasn't um, very noticeable, and you won't probably be able to see it in here, but there's like little raised dots up here on the tops of my letters. So what I usually do is just take my bone folder and like rub them out and voila, no big deal. It's totally um, looks like new or looks like it should anyway. So um, I am just going to trim these pieces. So all these little pieces are one inch wide by four inches. So um, I always like to have a extra little scraps of technique pieces. Like if I spend the time and energy doing a technique like this, you know, stencil stamping, um, I'm going to keep these scraps and use them on another card. So, or, you know, just plan ahead so that you make two of this card. But I, this is, I'm calling it stencil stamping. I think that's a technique, and um, you can probably find some, sam like, samples on split coast stampers. Um, speaking of split coast stampers, um, I am going to be on this week, I think, with a technique video. So a tutorial for them. So I'm really excited about that, that they um, approached me and asked me if I would do that and was definitely happy to because I've always really liked split coast stampers and I'm sure you guys do too. Like you guys go on and look for ideas and stuff on split coast stampers. Well, I'll be doing a tutorial, um, I think on Wednesday. I need to double check because we had a couple little scheduling conflicts and I don't know if it's going to totally get up and ready by um, by Wednesday, but I'm hoping it is and you guys can hop over there and I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm not supposed to because <laughs> it's like top secret until it launches. So, um, or, you know, not launches, but um, anyway, so I'm digressed, but anyway, the stencil stamping, um, definitely kind of fun. It's like using the negative space on your stencil or your uh, decorative mask. And um, each one of these, I just want to kind of lay out and make sure I have the border kind of envisioned right. Um, I may want to shrink this one down. I feel like it's got a little edge that it's not supposed to have. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just going to trim a hair off of it. When you're working with such like tight margins like this, it's kind of hard to get all the little borders to line up exactly perfectly, but um, it, I think it still looks good even if they're not like exactly one sixteenth of an inch or whatever. So, um, I'd love you guys to say hi, uh, when you come on, just, um, as a little reminder, make sure underneath your social stream box, you, um, don't have it sharing to Twitter and Facebook unless you really want to, um, 
I am putting together my card that I did. We already got one done. This was kind of a simple card, but I'm going to show you. I did another one. It's kind of fun. I don't know if you guys like seeing like the behind the scenes kind of stuff. Um, but I did a couple cards in preparation, you know, just planning what I wanted to do today. And so um, I'm going to bring an extra card up with each of the projects that I do tonight and just show you like, hey, this is sort of what I was thinking. And, you know, this is like extra project that I did, but decided not to share it or whatever. So there you go. I'm going to skip the green and just move on to the blue. So sometimes when you're lining things up like this, it's easiest uh, to get the ends sort of set and like fill in the middle just because I think it's less noticeable in the middle if it's a little bit off. So I don't know. I think that might just be me. Um, but definitely worth the shot just starting from the outside working your way in and um, this one I usually have some of this like liquid glue handy and I'm just gonna put a little bit on there I would like to just squeeze a little tiny bit of glue out and then just drag it because you don't really need very much you just need like the tiniest little hint so even like dragging it on there so that the glue just touches all the little spots um, is good and just hold that down for a second because this is live. <laughs> um, this one over here I'll show you says hello. So this would kind of be fun to do if you did a couple of the blue and a couple of the green, you know, a couple of each at a time and then you could do like three cards with each of the uh, little framelits that are in that set. So um, to show you the other card that I did kind of work um, this is, um, I did ink up the whole stencil, so I inked it up. I thought it would probably work a lot better with a darker color because you can't, I don't think you could see the happy very well. So, but I inked up the whole stencil with crushed curry and then I just die cut the hello with, um, I, like pattern paper. So... Um, that was kind of one of my mock-up options that I had for today, um, but decided to go with this because I thought, oh, this is really pretty. It shows a lot of versatility in uh, the colors, and it sort of shows you all the different colors um, that are stamped when you do the stencil stamping. So, um, so yeah, so there's that one. Um, I will tell you the door prize for tonight is going to be a set of these framelits, the greetings, uh, is it, yeah, greetings thinlets, I'm sorry, and, um, a, it's kind of going to be some, like, fun things that we've been using for this class, and, um, I really hope that it doesn't get boring because we're using the same products, but that it really shows you the versatility of these specific products that we're using, um, so the, uh, sorry, the three things that we're going to, I'm going to give away for the door prize for tonight are going to be the greetings thinlets, the happy patterns, um, decorative mass, and probably like a fun accessory to go with it. It'll might, it might be the sequins that we're using later or the daubers. So, um, I, whoever I pick for tonight, I'll email out the winner and they'll get that grand prize. So I'm going to move on. Um, definitely say hi if you're here. Um, I'd love to see who's on and say hi to you back. Um, this is the next card that we're doing, and I'm going to, oops, sorry, <laughs> turn in your view. Um, and just a note about the door prize. You did need to uh, have registered and uh, in order to... Um, win the door prize. So just in case like you happen to see it on somebody's feed or see it on my blog and just decided to tune in, um, you 
are only eligible to win the door prize if you registered uh, ahead of time. So the next card, um, I thought since you, I did post this on my blog a couple weeks ago, but I really liked it and I wanted to try the um, technique with some of the different patterns in the stencil. So this one um, I did show you before is from this stencil, the diamonds, and um, that's really fun. So, but for today I decided I wanted to try this one. So what I'm going to do, let me get out my supplies for this next card. We're also using the triple banner punch, which if you don't have it already, you are definitely going to want it. Um, I could probably do a whole class just on this banner punch, but it's really fun. We're going to do the two inch. Um, let me just show you right now while I got it out. I'll, I'll pre-cut this. So I still like to flip it over. Um, you can see the vellum coming into that opening right there. Um, I don't know why I get to be weird about it sometimes. You could pull it back a little bit so it doesn't cut so much off. I'm saving literally less than an eighth of an inch. Um, but if you stick it in all the way, you're, let me show you the front. That's the front. This, so the, the width that's the widest is two inches. And you're just going to punch it. And it makes like a super quick, easy, and also like symmetrical banner. Um, I'm going to show you another one. I'm going to do the short one just in case we decide to go with that one. Stick that one in there. I'm going to pull this one back a little bit since it's a little bit shorter piece of paper. I don't want to lose so much on there. And um, I'm going to have that one. So maybe I'll use those both. I don't know. But definitely a fun tool to have is that triple banner punch. So I'm going to start with that. And um, I already have my card stack scored. And I'm using the thick Whisper White, which is definitely um, one of the new must-haves from the um, new annual catalog. I've been using it a lot for techniques um, for the card front and then for the card base um, if I'm using if I'm doing a white card base I almost always use that thick whisper white now so I'm just gonna double check this before I go through all the work um, make sure it looks good I just want an, a nice thin border on all sides I think I'm gonna trim it a tiny bit Try not to be like super crazy, but I do like when it's that tiny little border. I really like to make sure that border is even. So it's that type A in me. It doesn't come out very often, but it does come out sometimes. So I'm going to, let's see. I forgot my washi tape. I should just keep some washi tape in here, but um, I'm going to flip this over and just tape this stencil right onto, I mean, I'm going to tape the back, tape the cardstock onto the back of the stencil like that. So that'll help hold it in place and it'll also make sure that I'm not covering if I tape it onto the front. Sometimes I accidentally cover up portions of the stencil and then I take it off and realize I missed like a corner or something. So we're going to use craft white ink and um, I'm just going to take it and with my dauber, you really need to use your dauber for this um, to try to get in all the little um, to get past the stencil. If you try to you to like ink um, your cardstock through the stencil using a brayer, it's not going to work very well because it 
it can't really get past that little area. If it was a larger stencil, maybe, but um, these smaller stencils definitely use your dauber. And this is going to take a little bit of time. So um, if you're on with me and you want to say hi, uh, we can chat. I do have my computer screen a little bit closer this time, so I don't have to strain so much to uh, <laughs> view my comments and my social stream here. Um, so you're just going to dab um, with your craft ink and remember that this ink is kind of like paint so it's going to stay um, a little bit wet and a little bit tacky for a little bit so you want to make sure to give it time to dry. You can use your um, heat gun if you want to just make sure that it um, dries thoroughly or just let it sit for a couple hours you know let it sit and come back to it that's what I usually do because I just move on to something else um, and I'm glad I didn't get a, do an arm workout today because <laughs> I've done several cards like this today just trying to find like the perfect sample that I wanted to do tonight and my shoulder is really starting to feel it. So, kind of funny. It's like those stamping muscles that we just didn't know we had. Sometimes, like, I'll be cutting for, like, a class or, like, if I'm making wedding invitations for somebody. I just made, oh, it was a month or two ago, I made, like, 120 wedding invitations. And I tell you, after those, like, two or three days of cutting, I, my stamp and muscles were sore. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um, yeah, my shoulders feeling this a little bit. Uh, but you're just going to keep adding on. Um, I probably could have re-inked my um, stamp pad. Or sometimes if you just roll it a little bit, like the ink just kind of sits at the edge of that dauber. Um, so, but this is probably the best way that I can think of I mean other than like a foam brush or something but if you use acrylic paint um, a lot of times it it like bleeds underneath the stencil so you really don't want to do that because it's it won't really hold that pattern that you're um, you know you're trying to transfer over so um, just kind of keep going with that I'm gonna have a look, overall look, and you can really get it as white as you want, really, um, depending on how hard you want to work. And sometimes when I do this, I end up, instead of using this panel for one card, I end up, you know, cutting it up and using like two or three inch strips on several cards. So um, it's always kind of just about how much time you want to invest into a card. If you need four cards, I'd probably do this once and cut it up and just put kind of like an accent panel on the card, you know? So, all right, I'm about done. I have done, I did do one ahead of time so that it was completely dry. So I hope I did it far enough in advance that it is dry for you. So, all right, I'm going to quit there. And I, what I did want to show you, which is probably kind of weird, but again, it kind of goes back to those behind the scenes um, of, like, making the card. Uh, so that's what it's going to look like. And I'm going to take this washi tape off so I can reuse that if I need to. And I'm going to show you how I clean my stencil. I was trying to figure out how I was going to do this card when I didn't have a helper with me or I didn't have like my daughters here because they all um, went somewhere I don't know where I think they had to get something for their little camp at their grandparents house but um, so I'm just gonna show you I use a vegetable brush a lot of times to clean my stencils so I will just put them in the water and um, or under running water I will have them like sitting on the middle of between my sinks and I just use my vegetable brush 
and I kind of scrub them off. And this really is only necessary to clean with like a brush like this if you're using like craft ink or acrylic ink or um, I've done recently some of that modeling paste, um, stuff like that, that's really gonna stick to your stencil. I just do that, clean it off and then grab, um, sorry, my paper towels are stuck under my big shot. Um, I just grab my paper towels and usually just dry it off just like that. So put a paper towel on the bottom and one on the top and you can even <laughs> use your brayer to dry it off. And then there you go. So just some of those like, I don't know, maybe a question you never thought to ask was like, how do you clean the craft ink off your stencil? <laughs> um, all right, so then let me show you, this is the one that's dry. I'm going to position this on. And in order to get that like shadow kind of thing, we're going to line it up and find where we were. Okay, find, uh, line it up so that it's right over the white and then you're gonna shift it either down and to the right or down and to the left. Just shift it a little bit off of where you were. So I'm gonna go with that and then I'm gonna try to kind of keep it, whoops, keep it like that and then put my washi tape back on. My two pieces of washi tape that I have <laughs> in my possession tonight. And there we go. So, um, it looks good. It looks like it's remained shifted. And then you're going to take the coordinating ink. So, in this case, I'm my cardstock is Watermelon Wonder. It's like my new favorite color. It's pretty obvious by now. Everybody's probably like, I'm so sick of seeing you use Watercolor Wonder. Um, but, and I'm just dabbing here again. And it's primarily because I don't want that white to be reactivated and come back and like mesh with my red to make like pink. So um, just kind of go up and down the lines and we're adding like a dark um, shadow almost to this. So you'll see when we remove it. It's really kind of one of those cool like, oh, that's a neat technique. So, um, if you're on and you want to say hi or ask a question, please feel free. I um, have my computer a little bit closer this time so I can see what's going on in the chat box. Um, I hope you're not scared off by the sharing <laughs> we were talking about. Don't share all your comments on Facebook. It's not a big deal. People understand. Um, and I appreciate you sharing. I was going to say, if you create any projects um, along with me or um, inspire, like from inspiration from this uh, stamp along, I would love for you to share it. Um, share it over on Facebook. You can, if you're on Instagram, you can take a picture and use the hashtag SSSAL15, which stands for the Summer Solstice Stamp Along 15. It's the title of this course. If you look up on your, right next to your video feed, it should say the title of this is hashtag SSSAL15. And what that does, if you're not really familiar with all those hashtags, um, Patty, your daughter, taught me this <laughs> um, a couple years ago, but it like links all the pictures together. So any picture that's hashtagged with Crazy Beautiful Studio with the Y-O-U, Tuffle Studio, Crazy Beautiful Studio, or hashtag SSSAL15. You can see um, what other people have made. I need to go back and tag some of these pictures because I don't think that I've posted any since we started going live because I've just been 
so busy. Um, but if you didn't hear, I'm on iTunes now. So if you um, have a podcasting app that you use on your iPad or on your phone or even on your computer, you can find me. Um, just go to the search. And actually, this weekend, I have been in the new and noteworthy section of um, the, what's it, crafts, like the hobby section, crafts and games, no, hobbies and games. And it comes up as a video podcast. So um, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of making them available there. And so in your podcasting app, it will show up every time I have a new video uh, podcast that that I'm doing. So that's kind of a good way, easy way for me and uh, easy way for you to um, be informed then when I've got something new. So that was kind of exciting. I've done a lot of work actually to get that um, up and going. <laughs> it's just this technology stuff can just be so time consuming. Um, okay, so be careful while you're taking this off. And there, isn't that pretty? That's kind of the cool background. And I'm going to take this and stick it over in my cleaning water so that I don't get it on anything else. And I'm going to just show you how I finished this card off. Ooh, we're running up against our time. I think I wasted a lot of time at the beginning because I was waiting for people to get on. So definitely so sorry about that. Um, I'm going to flip that over. Some of the ink might be still a little bit wet, so just be careful when you're putting it on. I'm going to just see. Oh, no, there we go. So there's that. I'm going to use this banner. I wanted to sort of change the orientation of my card, so I'm going to put it like this. But I wanted to just show you a quick tip with um, this fabulous, oh my gosh, I love the silver sequin trim. I use it a lot by just pulling sequins off and using them just like that on my card. Um, but I'm going to tell you, if you want to keep it in like a line and you want to use it this way, um, I usually just give myself like, I don't know, a half an inch or so of the thread over and above the length that you want um, to cover. So like right there. For this, then I would go out about another half an inch and I would cut it off right there. and pull off the extra sequins. I would probably just save those and just put them in my like little dish that I have on my crafting area. Um, and take this and wrap it around the back and stick it down with a glue dot. That was a little bit long so you could just take off the sequins until you know you're happy. Take off the sequins and wrap that around the back. So I think I for, forgot my glue dot. So um, I'm just going to leave that there. And that's going to go on. I am going to stamp for my last little thing here today. I'm going to stamp on this with my um, watercolor words. And memento ink. And since you can see right through this, I don't usually, like I usually cut my shape first <laughs> because you can see right through to put it exactly where you want it. I cut my shape first and then I stamp. So there you go. That's super fun. Um, I do want to, um, I'm going to put this on with a dimensional and that is going to wrap up that card. I'm going to stop my recording so that I can draw door prizes and thank you all for watching.